Hey guys, it's Trevor Hagen from HagenCreative.com. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, today we're going to be looking at how to create an effect that uh, I call the hyper zoom effect. Um, as you can see, it's a extreme push in and really accomplishes a really cool effect when trying to get in on a certain detail of a scene uh, or show off a product. Now you may be asking yourself, well, why can't I just achieve this effect shooting with a 4K camera? Now you could achieve somewhat of a zoom using a 4K camera, that's true. However, what we're gonna be showing today cannot be accomplished with a 4K camera or even a 6K camera because we're gonna be showing you today how to go from an extremely wide establishing shot and zoom in all the way to a extremely detailed macro shot that without losing any quality, any HD quality all the way through. Um, and also there's a lot of people out there that do wanna do zooms that maybe don't have access to 4K cameras. And so this is also a solution for you. Now, in order to accomplish this effect, you're gonna need a few things. First of all, you're gonna need two cameras, a couple different lenses, and you are going to need Adobe After Effects. Now, if you don't have all of these things at your disposal right now, don't worry. This tutorial is to teach you the principles behind the effect. And when you see a need for it or a client asks for something that where this could come in handy, you could always rent some lenses or rent an additional camera. Also, if you are unfamiliar with Adobe After Effects, this is a great first tutorial for you to learn some basic camera moves with After Effects. It's very, very simple and basic, and you can actually go to uh, Adobe and download a free trial of Adobe After Effects just to get started if you'd like. Um, we're gonna be doing a lot more free tutorials, which we're really excited about, and a lot of them will be in Final Cut Pro 10, um, but there will be some in After Effects as well, so now's a great time to get started. The cameras that you're going to need, let's talk about the camera setup. The cameras that you're going to need, it doesn't really matter the cameras you're using. Um, obviously, it would be great if you're shooting at least 1920 by 1080. If you have 4K capability, that's awesome as well, and that will absolutely help. But the cameras aren't as important as the lenses that you're using. And so a few lenses that you're going to need, depending on how close you want to get, right? Um, you're going to at least need a wide lens. Uh, we use for this shot a 17 to 40 millimeter Canon lens. <laughs> and then you're also going to need a closer up fixed lens. Uh, we highly recommend using a 50 millimeter Canon or maybe an 85 millimeter. Now you see here some behind the scenes of us actually putting this shot together. Now you're gonna notice that we're putting the two cameras very close together and then we are actually using the 70 to 200. However, it's important to know that we are not zoomed in on the 70 to 200 unless there's nothing else in the background. For example, with the shot of the blow dryer, we could zoom in with the telephoto lens without a problem because there was nothing in the background. There's just a white background. So we didn't have to worry about any compression in the shot or dimensions getting kind of uh, screwed up. And so in that situation that worked, otherwise make sure that you are not zoomed in on the scene and you're just at a 70 to avoid some of that compression. Now, once you have the cameras as close together as possible, one thing you're really gonna wanna make sure you do is ensure that the settings on both cameras are exactly the same. Not just the shutter speed, the ISO, the white balance, and the f-stop, but keep in mind that there are internal settings in these cameras as well, like auto exposure optimization. You wanna make sure that those things are turned off since a close-up shot and a wide shot are gonna have different lighting, and you wanna make sure that it looks exactly the same on both cameras, obviously, to achieve the effect. So, once you have that, you're gonna film your scene. Now, one thing in your scene that's really important is what really sells this effect is to have something moving. Um, the coolest shots that we've, we've shot with this is you know, when people are in motion, right? So you've got a blow dryer flying up into the air or you know, you've got somebody you know, interacting with something. That really sells the effect. Otherwise, it could just be a picture that you're zooming in on. So make sure you have motion in your scene when you're doing this. Okay, so we're gonna get to that point and we're gonna go now into After Effects and assemble those two and then we're gonna go back and talk about how to pull off that third angle. So, let's jump in here. 
Uh, first of all, we're gonna go in and we're going to open up After Effects and I'm using Adobe After Effects CC 2015. And what we're gonna do is we're going to grab a couple of the first shots, so 9401 and 9403, and we're going to put them into the scene. So if you're unfamiliar with After Effects, it's easy once you open it up to be a little intimidated by all of the controls and functions and options. Don't worry about all of that. Just focus on the things that we're going to be doing and we'll learn the other stuff as we go. So what we're gonna do is grab all the three clips, first of all, and we're gonna bring them in to the project here. We're just gonna drag and drop them in. And we're gonna find the two clips that we're gonna be first using. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this one, 9401, and we're gonna just drag and drop it onto this little landscape film strip, and that creates a little project for us um, based on the settings of the clip. Now, once we have this clip, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the other clip, the closer up one, and drag and drop it right up on top of it. Okay. Now, it's important that we see both of these shots. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to control the transparency of this clip. I'm gonna hit T once I'm clicked on the clip and it's gonna open up opacity. I'm gonna turn this down to about 60% just so I can see this clip and the other one at the same time. Now, what we gotta do first is we need to, find, we need to align the clips. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try to find the part exactly right when he starts to fold the newspaper. So right about there and right here. So let's see. All right, that's perfect. Now we did go in and we actually slated so that we lined both of these clips up. And if you wanna play the audio through and line the clips up, that's obviously a better way to do it but we're just doing quick and dirty here. So uh, so what we're gonna do is we're going to now take this clip that's up on top, the zoom in shot, and we're gonna hit S for scale. And these are just shortcuts, right? I mean, you can get to all of this stuff just by clicking this uh, drop down arrow here and going down, you can see the anchor point, position, scale, rotation, opacity, everything. But we're going to focus on the scale. We're gonna now scale this zoomed shot down and we're gonna to try to match it exactly to the scene. Now, to really get in here a little bit, we're gonna zoom in on our viewer here. And, uh, and how we do that is you hit Command Plus, and we're just gonna get in here just a little bit. Then I'm gonna use the little hand tool and move this up. All right, so we're just gonna line these up the best we can here, and uh, right in there seems good and really we're just looking at these elements where we want the focus to be um, and if there's if it doesn't line up perfectly again we are using different lenses so it's not going to be exact but we just get it as close as possible don't worry if there's a little blur there because we're going to address that here in the next uh the next part but that looks pretty close maybe if we went to 26 right in there is looking, looking good. So we're gonna now zoom back out. Now to minimize the box that we see around it, we're going to create a mask. And we're gonna go up here to this pen tool. We're gonna click on that. Make sure you're selected on the zoomed clip. And we're gonna just go in here and create a little bit of a mask. And that's just clicking around the square and we have a little mask there. Once we have the mask, we're gonna go down into the masks drop down, and we're gonna click on mask feather, and we're just gonna raise that up just a little bit here. And maybe the expansion, maybe expand it down, negative seven or so. Cool. Now you can see we don't have much of a, uh, a box around our shot. Great, so now we are ready to do the zoom effect. So we wanted to zoom as soon as he's going in for the hot chocolate, so right about there. Boom. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut this clip, Shift, Command, D, 
and you divide the clips in two. We're going to delete the first part here. Uh, we're going to create a keyframe of the opacity. And this is really simple to do. All you're going to do is see this little watch, this little timer right here. We're going to click it once and drag it down to zero. And then we're going to advance in time a little bit to about where our shot will end, right about here. And we're going to bring that up to 100%. And so now it slowly comes in. Now we're going to add a camera. We're going to go up into Layer New Camera and click OK. All the settings here are fine. And we need to make sure that both of our clips are 3D clips. And so you're going to see this little 3D box. Make sure you click in each of these boxes per clip so that they're both 3D. And that means that they can be manipulated in 3D space. Now we have our 3D camera. We are going to take the camera and push in on our shot as soon as it appears. And how we do that is we keyframe the camera. You're going to go into transform and the only thing we're going to be affecting here is the point of interest and the position. Um, there's several different ways to do this effect, but for today, we're just going to use this camera tool up here. You're going to click and hold on it and go into the track Z camera tool. Uh, Z space is front to back. It's moving forward and back in space. And so what we're going to do is we're going to, first of all, go down here. We've created the keyframes where we have them starting. And now we're going to drag to the point where we want the zoom to end, which is right in there. Now we're going to take this zoom and we're going to place it on the canvas and you're just going to click and drag up. And that's going to zoom the shot in. And you can see we're starting to lose some of the quality in our other shot. But the new shot right here, it still looks super crisp because it's a 1080 shot that we've just shrunk down and we're, we're not going to lose any quality moving up to it. So now we're going to go back up to the camera tool and we're going to click track X, Y, and we're going to just move that up to where we want it to be. And we're going to zoom just a little bit more. And at this point, it's just kind of eyeballing it to see about where you want it. And there looks good. Um, we're going to make sure we're fit. We fit the canvas so that we're not losing anything here. Maybe a little bit more of a zoom. All right, this should, this should do it. Okay, and now you'll see you have your zoom. Now to pull off this zoom, one thing that's really important, well, a couple things. First of all, you wanna make sure the zoom happens fairly quickly. If it's slow, then if there's any imperfections in you know, the different um, compression or dimensions or angle of your lenses, um, you're going to see those holes as you kind of move forward. If you have it happen really fast, then it tricks the eye that you're just zooming into it really quick. Um, another thing that will help sell your effect is if you add a motion blur to it. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn on the motion blur right here and make sure that both of our clips have motion blur. Oops, this motion blur turned on. And now as we go through it, you'll see that the zoom creates this little bit of a zoom blur. And so any imperfections that are lost between the two angles are a little more forgiving with that zoom. Boom. So there you have it. So that's the first zoom. And that in of itself is a really cool effect that you can use. All right. Now let's talk about the setup for our third zoom. This is what really sells the effect. And in the setup, you might be asking yourself, okay, you only have two cameras, where's that third one coming from and how is it not in the shot of the wide angle? Now, that's a great question. Um, this is the only one that you're going to shoot separately. And you'll notice that as we do this, in any of the shots we do, there is motion happening in the first two zooms and then the motion stops for just a second and then it continues once the macro shot happens. So with these actors, we've had them do a motion and then once they've got to the second zoom position, 
Then we have them pause and we set up for the third zoom. And once we have that set up, then we have them continue with the last zoom shot. Um, and you can see that here, for example, and actually you can hear us kind of talking about it here. That's it, dude, that was it. And we have him just hold the shot for just a second there. Okay, and so how do we set it up? Take a look here at figure 1A. Again, this is a visual representation of the layout of the cameras. As you can see, we have our initial camera position to the left. Now, we have set up a new camera that is lined up with the first camera angle, almost as if you were to take a string and tie it between that first angle all the way to the subject. That's where the third camera or the second camera that you've just moved needs to sit. At this point, you're not shooting with the initial camera setup, so it doesn't matter that it's in the way. What you're using on this camera is a macro lens to really get up close to the subject or the product that you're shooting. Now, it's really important that you set this shot up extremely fast, especially when you're working with talent that could be moving. So as soon as we have a talent in place, we bring one of the cameras around, we change the lens, we get it down in position as fast as possible so there's as little movement as possible. Now, once you have it set up and you shoot it and you, or you start recording, then you can have the talent move again and you've just sold that third shot. Once again, you would go back into the project and we would then take the third shot, put it on top of this one, and we're gonna scale it down just a little bit, hit S and just scale that down. Now, first things first, we need to make sure we create a 3D clip here. So we're gonna click that. You're gonna see that it's really big because we're already zoomed in with the camera. And so we're really gonna need to scale this down like 5% here. Get it close, we're gonna zoom in here just to the canvas and line this up. Now, before we line it up, we need to find right where the action starts to happen there and that's right there. And so we want that to be right about here, right after he pauses and holds for a second. So as soon as he holds still, that's when we're gonna create the camera zoom. And then it's gonna zoom and he's gonna go into the motion. And so that should work perfect. Now we're going to hit T for opacity. T for opacity. Anyway, um, we're gonna hit T, that'll open up our opacity. And we're gonna go in here and just turn that down so we can get to see both of these, we can line them up. And you can see the rotation is just a little bit off. Uh, he rotated his wrist just a little bit uh, while we were setting up the shot. So we're gonna hit R for rotation and we're just going to rotate the Z axis just a little bit there. Maybe negative six or so. Looking at the logo there, maybe negative five would do. All right. Maybe it's a little small. Now when you're working with this zoomed in of a shot, you may need to go into point percentages. So we're gonna do 5.5 and see what that looks like. See how much that zoomed in, just because we're so zoomed in with the camera. So maybe a 5.2, and that's looking about right. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect because a lot of the motion blur that's gonna happen with the camera will take a lot of that out. Um, one thing I'm noticing is he's a little paler in this shot um, than the other shot. So we're gonna go up into effect, do a couple things. We'll do brightness and contrast, and we're just gonna turn the brightness down just a little bit. And then we'll go into effect, go to color correction curves. And in here you can affect red, green, and blues, um, and also exposure control. Uh, we're going to darken it just a little bit in here, and then we're gonna go to reds, bring the reds up just slightly in the mids, and turn the blues down just a little bit. You're just looking to kind of match the colors 
as best you can. And that's pretty, pretty good. Um, another thing we could do is a mask like we did on the other shot. We're gonna go into the mask tool here and just create a little bit of a mask around here to feather up to get rid of that hard cut box. And again, just go down into masks and we're gonna just feather that up just a little bit there. And that should do it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create the, uh, the fade on of the clip. And so just hit T and go to opacity. We're gonna bring that down to zero at the beginning of the clip and then go a little ways and bring that up to 100. We're gonna shorten that up just a little bit there and uh, take a look here. All right, last thing. We're gonna go into the camera. We're gonna do the exact same zoom. First of all, we need to click on the arrow here again and zoom out. I'm just gonna hit fit here. And let's bring this down just a little bit. Okay, now, one thing to make sure of when you're creating new keyframes on a clip that already have keyframes on them is to not click the little stopwatch. By clicking the stopwatch on a clip, as you can see here, uh, that already has keyframes, it will delete all the keyframes. And so instead of clicking the uh, stopwatch, you'll go over to the actual keyframes over to the, the far left and click those to create new keyframes. Uh, that's where we wanna start. And then we will go in here to the end point and we will create the zoom. We'll go up here again to the camera tool and we will click and drag up and click again here. Grab this tool, move it over, zoom in a little bit more. Okay, and just all right, and just kind of move it around until it totally fills the frame. And again, this is a pretty extreme shot, so we really want to see, you know, the watch there, and that is definitely selling that. We may even want this to happen a little quicker. I'm going to bring these back just a little bit here. And one last thing is to create a motion blur on this clip. And let's go ahead and play that back here. Great. Now, if I was being really picky, I would say maybe that, maybe I'd like to see the watch a little bit longer uh, before he picks it up. And so that has to do with the timing of the edit, obviously, but, uh, you get the idea for the effect. So there you have it, you have shot one, shot two, and then that last zoom right there into the macro shot. Um, from there, we, right as his hand came out of the screen, we went back to a wide shot of him taking a drink of the hot cocoa um, just to kind of finish the scene. And again, there's so many different applications where you could use this effect or different variations of this effect. We hope that you guys learned a lot today. And if you're interested in learning more about videography in general, make sure to check out our Hog and Creative online videography workshop where you'll learn everything from principles of videography, what cameras to shoot with, lighting, in-camera settings, editing techniques, and much more. So with that said, you guys, we appreciate the time that you've taken to watch this tutorial. We really have so many more tutorials in the works ready to share with you guys. So make sure you click on the subscribe button below so that you're informed on all of those new tutorials. And if you do implement this effect or any others that you see here, make sure to hashtag us at hashtag Hagen Creative. We would love to see your work. This is Trevor Hagen once again. We'll see you next time.